What is up, YouTube family? Thank you guys for tuning back into Will Burn a Reaction. So, we went down to Disco Era, got some mixed reviews on it, you know, headed down those uh, documentary lanes and some of those songs. There was someone who came up um, in on the uh, 70s and 80s disco tunes that I reacted to. Um, and her name was Bonnie M. And she's one of the artists I said I, I wasn't familiar with, but I'm not reacting to her. I am going down a story by her because you guys are like, you know, these are one hit wonders. Some of these guys, you don't need to go down. Uh, their lane and see what they brought but this one's interesting because it has a title like some of these other ones i reacted to in documentaries where it's like bonnie m the biggest hoax in music history i just did one of these that was a hoax um milli vanilli hoax and uh there was one more i believe i did um these are crazy because you just never know what you're gonna get out you're gonna get lip syncing you're gonna get faking something or i don't know what they're gonna do you just never know with these but let's dive in and what does she do what did she do is the question for today's video, we will be talking about Boney M and how it is the Boney, biggest sorry, hoax in the music industry. Boney M is one of the most popular bands which started in the 1970s and has continued all the way through to the 1990s. It was created by Frank Farian. Boney M has sold over 159 albums worldwide since their first release, with Farian enjoying the majority of the income. They not only received success in their country of origin, but also outside it. However, people were shocked when they found out that it was all a facade. What is Boney M? Boney M was a Euro-Caribbean vocal group founded by Frank Farian, a German record producer and the group's major songwriter. Wait, is this the same guy that Millie was behind Millie Vanilli? Right? That is him, right? That, that looks like his face. I think that's the same guy. What is everybody just signing with this dude to just be a hoax? Like, is he the, the king of hoax creating bands that aren't legit? Like... He's like the guy you say, if you aren't legit, come to me. I feel like he had an infomercial that was recruiting groups like, if you want to be famous and do it the wrong way, I'm the guy for you. Like, I, that's what I'm getting from him, if that is, but I'm thinking it is. So consisted of Liz Mitchell and Marsha Barrett from Jamaica, Maisie Williams from Montessera, and Bobby Farrell, a performing artist from Aruba, were the four initial members of the group's official lineup, which was based in West Germany. The group was created in 1976 and rose to prominence during the late 1970s disco era. Since the 1980s, the band has performed with various lineups and personnel. The band has sold around 80 million records worldwide and is known for international hits including Daddy Cool and Rasputin. The band is not together anymore, but their songs are still loved and adored by millions of fans around the globe. How did it begin? In December 1974, German singer-songwriter and later turned music producer Frank Farian recorded a song named Baby Do You Wanna Buck. The song has some deep vocals, as well as the high falsetto backing vocals, and Farian recorded them both himself. Farian was also credited as the writer of the song. However, it was actually a remake of a very popular song called Al Capone by Prince Buster. When the track was ready, Farian used a pseudonym, Boney M, to release it. Farian revealed that the name Boney M came from an Australian detective show called Boney. I turned on the TV one day and it was the end of the detective series. I just caught the credits and it said Boney. Nice name, I thought. Boney, Boney, Boney. Boney M. Boney, 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 Boney M. That's crazy. So <sighs> we're, we're, we're creating fake groups and, and groups that have, I'm just going to say no talent because if they're doing it this way, you don't have talent to me. Then you're stealing names from shows. Like, is anything his? Is it original? Is anything? You're stealing songs, shows, making fake groups. Like, is anything original here? Is there any type of legitimate musicianship coming from him? Or he's just all about, you know, I'm going to steal it, use it, and run with it, and get caught and do it again. Nice sound. Simple. Very revealed in an interview. The song had quite a dry release but it gradually became famous. When the song became a hit in the Netherlands and Belgium, Farian decided to form a band for live performances and TV appearances. People didn't know that there was no Boney M and Farian had sung the song to himself. For the early performances, Farian sought the help of model turned singer Maisie Williams and her Jamaican singer friend Sheila Bonick, as well as dancer known as Mike. A singer named Natalie arrived in 1975, but was quickly replaced by Jamaican-born Claudia Berry. After Bonick and Mike had left, Maisie Williams called in Bobby Farrell, an Aruba-based male exotic dancer. Marsha Barrett joined the group, which replaced Claudia Berry, 
who resigned in February 1976 to pursue a solo career. With Liz Mitchell, a former member of the Le Humphrey Singers, Liz Mitchell, Maisie Williams, Marsha Barrett, and Bobby Farrell were the original members of Boney M. Success in the 70s Take the Heat Off Me, Boney M's debut album, was released in 1976. Marsha Barrett had previously recorded for Farian, including the title track and Lovin' or Leavin', both of which had previously been recorded in Germany by another oh, Farian what a coincidence. man, Gilla. Farian decided to employ solely Liz Mitchell and Marsha Barrett, along with his own studio enhanced voice, to create the Boney M sound because Maisie Williams' voice was not deemed suitable for recording purposes by Farian and a tryout with Bobby Farrell playing No Woman No Cry also did not work. The year 1978 was the most successful for the band. They issued a new double A-side single, Rivers of Babylon, Brown Girl in the Ring, which was a smash hit across Europe, reaching number one in a number of countries and becoming one of the best-selling singles of all time in the United Kingdom. It was also their most successful hit in the United States, reaching number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100. Following that came Night Light to Venus, their best-selling album, which included smash singles including Rasputin and Painter Man. Interestingly, the band was actually quite famous in the Soviet Union, but when they went there to perform, their most popular song, Rasputin, was banned due to its lyrics and subject of the song. Oh, wow. The truth. Even though Bobby Farrell was the group's only male singer, Bobby, on the other hand, provided almost no vocal contributions to the group's recording, according to Farian. Instead, in the studio, Farian sang the masculine parts of the song. Farrell, on the other hand, performed the live song. While Bobby Farrell had never sung on the group's songs, it was revealed in 1978 that Maisie Williams had never sung on the studio recordings because her voice wasn't suited for this kind of music, according to Farian in an interview. Farian sought more attractive youngsters to lip sync his music in front of an audience. As a result, he employed Jamaican session singers Marsha Barrett and Liz Mitchell, Maisie Williams, and Bobby Farrell. As a result, only two members of the group sang on the records. The sound of the band in concert was also boosted by supporting vocals. However, all four members of the band, including Williams and Farrell, sang live at the band's concerts. So this right here is giving me the definition of sellout. Like, I I'm going to use the term sellout because... You know, this group is not like Millie Vanilli. They kind of like, I mean, Millie Vanilli kind of knew what they were doing too. But I feel like for them, like, I mean, you're starting out nobody singing. Like, the only time you go up there is the lip sync on stage and all this. And then the, the the guy, what is his name they just, that, that's doing all this? I feel like, did he feel like maybe, because they say he did vocals. Obviously, he maybe can sing. So did he feel like maybe he didn't have the image to get on stage? Because if he has a talent, why wouldn't he just do it himself and put out his own album? You know, so maybe he was trying to look for certain images and think people... You know, I'll record the vocals, but you guys go out there and get the image and sell to the people. But I, I just don't think, I mean, even if I didn't even have a talent, right? I don't think I can let somebody talk me into, you know what? I want you to come, uh, you know, fake, be a fake artist for me. I don't know. I, I, I guess they say, like some people say, oh, money talks, but you're faking it. You know, you don't even really have a talent. You're You're faking on stage. You're not really performing and you're getting praise for it as you are doing it right that that's a little weird to me that is a little weird several backing vocalists were added to the band's live sound which helped to compensate for any vocal shortcomings the group may have had in comparison to studio recordings however people were shocked but they did not care because it becomes standard practice in the late 1970s disco genre in addition people loved the frontman and his acts at the concert so they did not bat an eye in an interview william said yes frank brought us all together because he knew we'd look better fronting this band, but we also brought a Caribbean flavor to his sound. Some people suggest we were just Frank's puppets, but during the 70s Pretty and much. 80s, image was as important as the music. The fans wanted a show, and they couldn't care less who was in the band. Final albums and variations within the band. The fifth album by Boney M was supposed to be released in November of 1980, but the recording sessions went into 1981. Bobby Farrell was fired from the group due to his unreliability. This sudden move by Farian proved to be disastrous. Even though the album was quite popular, unlike other albums, it failed to secure a spot in Billboard's Top 100 charts. Wow. Plus, after Farrell's departure, the band was unable to promote the album as he was a fan favorite and actually helped the sales. Farian tried to replace Farrell with Reggie Sibbo, 
but their next album still failed to make an impact on their declining sales and quality. In 1984, Happy Song featured the return of Bobby Farrell and the band returned to Germany's top 20 charts, but popularity was not as potent as before. Varian had visibly lost interest in the group by 1985, and their studio did. album, I Dance, was widely considered as lackluster and w underwhelming. After celebrating the group's 10th anniversary in 1986, the group officially separated following the release of the commercially unsuccessful single, Young, Free, and Single, which reached number 48 on the Billboard Hot 100. However, it appears that Farrell and Farian were still not on good terms. Farrell's daughter, Zania Farrell, says Farian deprived Farrell of his rights over Boney M's hits, which caused her father to lose all his income after the band split. When dad asked Farian for 100,000 marks, he was told to sign some papers. He signed away everything. Image rights, royalties, the lot. My father lost everything. What? I mean, I can't even really feel bad, though. I mean, you... you... <laughs> You were used as a puppet in the beginning of the uh, beginning of this. I mean, I can't feel bad. You were played during the beginning, and then you got played at the end. Like, I mean, do you not expect that? You have a guy who got you for to fake like you're up there singing and dancing. Well, you're dancing, but entertaining people, but you're not singing. And then you're looking for this money, and I guess you're entitled to something, right? Because you actually went out there and did something. But at the same time, you went into a you went into something that was already chaotic and drama involved. It, like, did you really think it was going to have a happy ending? Really? Like, no, it's not. It, it was falling apart from the beginning. We had to move in with my grandmother in the Netherlands and live on welfare, she said. After this point, different variations of the band started emerging and performing live. Some of these variations were actually approved by Farian, while some were formed solely by group members. Marilyn Sherabai took place of Liz Mitchell in one version of the show, which began touring in the first half of 1987. Mitchell rejoined the band for a second leg of the tour in late 1987, while Marsha Barrett left the group soon after. Meanwhile, Bobby Farrell had negotiated an agreement to record a new Boney M album without Farian. When Farrell failed to show up for recording on tour and Maisie Williams had never sung on record, the album was renamed No One Will Force You and it was released by Liz Mitchell as her first solo album. Mitchell and Williams competed a tour in 1987-88, replacing Barrett and Farrell with singer Celine Duncan and Ron Gale. They should have played replaced a lot of people. by Carol Gray, while Ron Gale was replaced by Kurt Dederen. In an interview, Maisie Williams revealed at one time, Bobby and Liz also had their own versions of the band, and we'd see each other in airports. I still meet Liz sometimes when we're both flying to play in the same city on the same night, but that's okay. It shows there's a lot of demand for Boney M, so there's enough work for all of us. Even though she made it seem like a normal thing, it must have been quite awkward. Unfortunately, the frontman Bobby Farrell died in 2010 while in a hotel in St. Petersburg, Russia. He performed in the same city a day before. An interesting fact is that Farrell actually died in the same city where Rasputin died. Rasputin was the name and subject of Boney M's most iconic song. That and is Farrell crazy. Farrell actually dressed up as Rasputin during some of his performances. Conclusion. Even after the truth was revealed that neither Bobby Farrell nor Maisie Williams sang a single song on the records of Boney M, there was not much outcry. But when Farian did the same thing with Millie Vanilli, there was a huge that backlash, is him. and the group even had to oh, return I knew their it. award. It appears as if Farian had some shyness regarding his performance, so he used to hire attractive-looking individuals I to figured. perform his song. I called it. That's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed watching it. Called it. I knew it. I knew it. But he kept doing it. That's the crazy part. He's getting the way. I think the people should have noticed when he, whenever he put on a group, it should have been like looked at. Oh, he's putting on a group again. Let's look to see if they're really up here doing it. You know, because he already had Millie, Millie, uh, Millie Vanilli fall off. And now you got this new group that he put out and he's doing the same thing. And he changed out so many freaking artists. Like he changed out so many people in this group. Like I would have got to the point like, who are we going to see now? Oh, another singer. Oh, here we go again. Like this guy just sounds like he's just out to get a quick dollar the easiest way you can without i mean he'll do the work in the studio but you guys go out there and do the labor that's the way it looks these is getting crazier I, I i just i don't know what to say anymore about these documentaries i think we're getting somewhere to the point where i'm like this story can't get any worse it can't get any there's nothing else that no but then you send me something else i'm like wow here we go again with something else in the music industry well guys let me know what you thought about this one this one was crazy too I mean, it's common sense. These are adults. They should understand what they're getting into and what they're dealing with. But 
hey, I guess for the dollar, people will do anything. People will do anything for the dollar these days. Let me know what you guys thought about this one. Thank you for tuning back in with me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share. See you guys in the next one.